It's Tuesday, January 25th, and this is now on HN. HPD is investigating an officer involved shooting near Alamoana Center. A UPS plane headed for South Korea returns to Honolulu after the crew detects an unusual odor. Take steps before an incursion, not afterwards. U.S. officials are helping to beef up Ukrainian defenses as tensions escalate along the country's shared border with Russia. I'm Skyler Henry in Washington with the latest and more on the Biden administration's position. These stories plus hundreds felt some shaking following a 4.7 magnitude quake off Maui. Details just ahead on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for having lunch with us here in the H&N Digital Center. So good to be back with you today at noon. You know, HPD is investigating an officer involved shooting near Ala Moana Center. That left a man in serious condition. Our Sammy Solina has the story. Police are classifying this as first degree attempted murder. Police came to Ala Moana Center after reports of a man threatening someone with a knife. This happened around 11 p.m. Monday night. A victim who wasn't hurt pointed the suspect out to police. They approached the man with the knife and commanded him to drop it. They said he refused to comply and while still holding his weapon, charged them. Multiple officers fired shots, according to HPD. When paramedics arrived on scene, they treated the suspect, who is 48. He had multiple gunshot wounds. The criminal investigation division said officers weren't hurt. EMS on scene said a woman was apparently apparently hit by a stray bullet, but refused to be taken to the hospital. Sammy Solina for This Is Now. Thanks, Sammy. Wanted to alert you guys to some other breaking news we're monitoring here. Athletics director Dave Matlin is about to give a media briefing. They're setting up for that right now as we speak. I'm going to go ahead and move on to some other news, but as soon as they start talking, we're going to bring that to you live. Of course, the other big story of the day, a wild, wild ride on Wall Street. Let's turn it over to Michael George with more on that. More turbulence on Wall Street. After another sharp sell-off, stocks flirted with positive territory Tuesday, but couldn't commit. The bears have the market by the throat at this point. Trader Peter Tuckman says concerns over rate hikes, rising inflation, supply chain issues, and Russian aggression are all playing a part in this volatility. Markets actually can adapt to virtually anything. But when everything's lumped on in, in, in like a, a, a real murky soup, then, then you have anxiety. For the past 18 months, the markets have benefited from federal stimulus and favorable central bank policies. But analysts say the days of easy money are over and interest rates could be going up sooner rather than later. Federal Reserve does not want to be in the business of providing further assistance to the economy. What it really wants to do is begin to try to grapple with inflation. Wall Street is watching and waiting for the Federal Reserve to announce its policy changes on Wednesday. Traders say the more information the Fed provides, the better. Even if they do things that we, we have some sense they may do, I'm not sure how the market will respond to it. Analysts advise the average investor to keep a cool head and a long-term focus. In the long term, uh, these market dips will be only a memory and hopefully uh, just a, a short one. Rate hikes could come as soon as March. Michael George, CBS News, Wall Street. All right, let's get to that breaking news right now. Dave now Matlin is going to give us an update from the UH Athletics Department. Let's listen in. And ask them to apply. And I began interviewing qualified candidates immediately. The goal was to get someone on board in time to give us our best shot at recruiting. Given National Letter of Intent Day was approaching quickly on February 2nd. I had already conducted several interviews and identified Timmy Chang as an early front runner. Then Jude applied that Monday. I interviewed him soon after, along with several other candidates. After the interview with June, I considered his unique experience and, the, in, and the, the interest he expressed in supporting the success of the program. I remember an idea that June himself had back in 2015, a succession plan. He would mentor the next coach, who at that time was Nick Rolovich for three to five years. This time it would be Timmy Chang. I really believe that this was an opportunity to make the best of both worlds. 
We would have gained from the immediate fan excitement that June would bring, and he would be able to mentor Timmy and work side by side with him. This would be in the best interest of our program, not only from the player recruitment standpoint, but really in all aspects. When June and I met for the second time on Friday, this time in person, I set aside three hours for the meeting and asked President Laster to be prepared to join us in case we got close to finalizing the deal. I started the meeting by sharing my idea with June and explained that Timmy Chang, who is from his coaching tree, would be identified as the future head coach in year three. We had no disagreement about Timmy being on the staff. He is a very accomplished coach, a true homegrown talent. He represents a bright, exciting future for UH football. As we started to work through the details, he made it clear that two years was too short of a transition period. I offered three years, which meant that Timmy would take over in year four. Another sticking point was my approval of assistant coaches. This is not new. It's a standard practice at UH. Our appointments have to be approved at a level above the supervisor. This is true for all of our teams because I am accountable for those hires. In this specific instance, it was um, in the one specific instance uh, regarding uh, Rich Miano, a living UH football legend, Rich is one of the great stories in Rainbow Warrior history. And there is no doubt that he loves the program. But I told June that adding Rich to the staff in this succession model would be problematic. As just days earlier, he stated to the media that his dream was to become the head coach one day. I probably could have been persuaded during the negotiations, but we never got past, past this point in the discussion. After about 30 minutes of our three hour meeting, June indicated that he could not accept the offer and he ended the meeting. June shook my hand on his way out and said that he'd be rooting for us. Uh, since time was of the essence, I immediately returned to Timmy and started negotiating an agreement for Timmy to be our next head coach. I appreciate the support June expressed for Timmy immediately following the announcement. And I look forward to June and those fans who were pulling for him to support our UH players and coaches and the program that they love. A lot has happened in the last couple of weeks. My focus is on supporting our new head coach and our student athletes. I believe there will be healing. I promise to be an active participant in this healing. And I believe that we in Hawaii are always open to working towards a common good. I will never stop working on a positive future for UH athletics. I appreciate this uh, opportunity to provide context and I can take any questions you have now. Okay. At this time, we'll open it up to questions. Once again, we're using the raise your hand function. Um, please identify yourself and your affiliation. Uh, and also try and leave it um, to one question and, and a follow up uh, so we can move through the list. Uh, we're going to begin with um, Stephen. Hi, um, I was just wondering um, if um, was the succession plan your your first choice and if June had accepted it, would he be the coach today? The succession plan was 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 my first choice. No, no question. So I, I, I guess that that would be true, Stephen. Rick. Can you specifically address the public concerns that this was a done deal, that the hiring of Timmy Chang was a done deal? and that the offer, the initial offer of two years was done to uh, scuttle any negotiations with uh, Coach Jones. Yeah, well, hey Rick, um, thanks for the question. I did address that in my opening statement that um, that it, it wasn't a done deal, that you know I, I was on board to have June and with Timmy being the coach in waiting as my first choice as I, as I addressed it in, in, in my opening statement with the timeline. Moving on to Keith DeMolder, KITV. Uh, so just to be clear, the offer that was reportedly made on Friday, was that the first offer made from the university to anybody to be the head coach? Or was there an offer or talks before that to, for, Ch for Timmy alone to be the head coach? That, that was the first offer for anyone to be the head coach in the succession plan model. Uh, Josh Pacheco, ESPN Honolulu. David, thank you. I, I know, uh, as you mentioned, negotiations started shortly afterward uh, with, with Timmy Chang. How quickly was the timeline from the end of the meeting on Friday to starting those negotiations with Timmy to become the next head coach? Well, it was, it was, it was you know, that, that was plan B. So uh, pretty immediately, once, once uh, it, it broke off, then we went immediately to that. You know, time, I don't remember, within an hour maybe we, start, we started because you know, like I said, the whole thing was about getting a, a coach on board for our student athletes and so we can move forward. Thanks, Josh, for the question. Manolo Morales, KHON2. 
All right, thank you. Um, why, why was it necessary to hold that press conference on Saturday about June Jones when it looked like you were already planning to hire Timmy Chang anyway at that point? Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't a part of that press conference, um, but um, I, I was, I, frankly, I was, I was working on, on Timmy at that point, and, and it wasn't a done deal at that point. I mean, we, we, we still were, I was hopeful that plan B would work, but I've had in, in the seven years I've been here with hiring 13 head coaches, I've had things fall apart at the end where they, where they didn't work out. So um, it, 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 that was plan B. I was hopeful, but it wasn't done until, until a few hours later. I, I forget exactly what the timeline was. All right, that's the athletic director right there for UH, David Matlin, giving us an update. What did we exactly learn there, Ashley? Well, he's explaining his decision and the timeline for offering Timmy Chang the UH uh, head coach football posi- uh, job. Uh, he said that the succession plan of having uh, Timmy and June Jones on the staff, June Jones being the head coach, Timmy being the successor eventually was his first choice. Of course, we'll have more on this story online as well as later editions of h and All right. Let's move on to some other news of the day. Here is the latest regarding the pandemic. Now to the pandemic. The state health department is reporting 1,904 new COVID infections today. The breakdown includes more than 1,400 cases on Oahu. Maui has 170, the Big Island 142, and Kauai is adding 90. Moloka'i and Lanai have single digits. So there's this new survey out from travel website Expedia that finds 68% of Americans are planning to go big on their next trip. Many searching for destinations like Rome, Bali, London, Paris. So how do you plan a big trip amid so much uncertainty? And many are wondering, is this really a good time to take a major trip? Here's what Peter Greenberg, CBS's travel editor, had to say. It actually is. Airfares are at historic lows. Mm -hmm. They're never going to get any lower than they are now, number one. And all the indicators are that about 3.4 billion people are going to travel this year, more than a billion crossing an international border. Not at the top of the 2019 levels, but getting pretty close to it. Many planning a trip are also wondering about travel insurance. What's that all about? During the pandemic, it was the number two largest level of complaints because most people watching the show book their trips online. And you can't complete the transaction unless you either opt in or opt out of the insurance. You don't know what you're covered for, and worse, you don't know what you're not covered for. And so many people discovered that on page 95 of that website, which you never got to, Mm -hmm. there was that clause that said, oh, by the way, we don't cover for pandemic. They essentially bought worthless insurance. So most trips don't get canceled. So are we really betting against the odds these days? Ah, people themselves cancel the trips because of COVID. Yeah. So if the airline That's cancels the point. trip, you're, you're covered by the U.S. Department of Transportation oh. saying you'll get a refund. But if you cancel the trip, you're out of luck. Now there's some insurance policies that are changing their deal because they had to pivot. The market demanded it. So there are two companies, Alliance or Allianz has one. Kovac is a new company that really will take you, if you're testing positive, they'll cover you and they'll fly you home. Greenberg also filled us in on a new concept called trip stacking. Ah, that's what people are doing to to protect themselves. They're making multiple reservations on multiple destinations, knowing that the airlines got rid of those draconian ticket cancellation fees. So you can do that and knowing you're not going to lose your money. If one trip cancels or you cancel it, you get to the other one. New today, UPS says one of its planes headed for South Korea returned to Honolulu's airport overnight after the crew detected an unusual odor in the cockpit. Out of an abundance of caution, they decided to return to DKI a little after 11 last night. The crew said it was not an emergency and they landed safely. The aircraft was then inspected. According to FlightAware, the plane took off again at around 2.10 this morning. A 4.7 magnitude earthquake shook Maui last night. There was no tsunami threat to the state. The USGS says it hit nearly 10 miles east of Wailua just before 11 o'clock. Over 570 people reported that they felt the quake. Again, there was no tsunami threat to Hawaii. And we have this update to pass along. An Australian ship carrying aid for Tonga is dealing with a COVID outbreak with 23 crew members testing positive. Tonga is in desperate need of relief supplies following the eruption and tsunami earlier this month. But they're also trying to keep COVID out. Tonga has only had one confirmed case, and that was back in October. 
Officials say the aid ship will remain at sea while they figure out what to do and how to do some sort of contact delivery method. Meantime, Matson is contributing $375,000 in goods and services to Tonga. Matson delivered the first shipment on Friday. Another shipment will leave New Zealand this week. Russia is not backing down from its border with Ukraine with thousands of troops in position. Analysts say President Vladimir Putin could order an invasion at any time. Skylar Henry has more on what the U.S. is doing. The latest shipment of U.S. military aid arrived in Kyiv Tuesday, part of a $200 million package to help bolster Ukraine's defenses. It comes as Russia releases new video of military drills near the border, raising concern of a possible invasion. I made it clear to uh, early on to uh, President Putin that if he were to move into Ukraine, that there would be severe consequences, including significant economic sanctions. Top members of the Biden administration's military and diplomatic teams visited the White House Tuesday, a day after 8,500 American troops were put on high alert to deploy at short notice to NATO countries in Eastern Europe. Those forces on high alert are they're part of a NATO operation, not a sole U.S. operation. And I've made it clear to uh, President Putin that we would be but we have we have a sacred obligation, Article 5 obligation to our NATO allies. The Defense Department won't rule out the possibility of even more troops being put on high alert. In a rare bit of praise, the Senate's top Republican, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, said he's encouraged by the Biden administration's approach to the situation. We're prepared to take steps before an incursion, not afterwards. In a trench along the front line in Ukraine, a picture of Russian President Vladimir Putin serves as target practice. Russia, which has 100,000 troops at the border, says it has no plans to invade, but many in Ukraine find that hard to believe. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. All right, let's move on to the weather, taking you live outside, looking over Kakaaka Waterfront Park. I'm just hoping to see a whale tail just splash <laughs> out there. I haven't seen one yet this season. Let's turn it over to Billy V with an update on all those conditions outside. All right, happy Aloha Tuesday. Let's go ahead and take a look at your midday weather. We'll start with the numbers on the surf. Now, of course, we had big waves this past weekend. That's on the way down. Another reinforcing swell coming up tomorrow, and then another swell coming up on Friday. It should be near advisory levels, and the conditions will be good because the winds are light. 8 to 12 on the north shore today, west side by this afternoon, 5 to 7. Box jellyfish over on the waters on the south-facing shorelines, and the east side, that is a trade wind swell. Your forecast for today, partly sunny with some windward and Malka clouds will get to 82 degrees by the time we hit uh, this afternoon, uh, about 3 p.m. Uh, notice we may have a few windward and Malka showers drifting leeward at times. And then as we take a look at your seven day forecast to kind of take a look ahead, uh, today's weather will be nice. Once again, windward and Malka showers drifting leeward at times. We do have a drier trend. So that means Wednesday through Friday, nice weather, lots of sunshine. And then we got a front that's going to drop in, may drop in a few sprinkles overnight on Friday. Notice that the winds start to change. We'll go light and variable as we go Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Get the latest online, on air, on your mobile device at hawaiinewsnow.com. More international controversy surrounding the Australian Open. Authorities at the event have reversed a restriction after banning fans from wearing t-shirts supporting a Chinese tennis star. Ian Lee has the story. Can you just show us the shit? Four simple words are causing a racket at the Australian Open. Where is Peng Shui? Well, this is a female tennis player who's being persecuted. This viral video shows police last week ordering fans to remove their shirts supporting the Chinese tennis star, saying they violate their no politics policy. The Australian Open does have a rule that there can't be any political slogans. Tennis legend Martina Navratilova slammed the ban, calling it pathetic. Peng Shui disappeared last year after accusing a top Chinese leader and ally of the country's president of sexual assault. She has since denied making the claim and has only been seen in seemingly scripted appearances on Chinese state media. This movement doesn't stop until we see Peng Shui outside of China or if we see Peng Shui speaking freely. Tournament chiefs have now made a U-turn, allowing fans to put their shirts back on, but only if they remain peaceful. Hopefully that sea of shirts will be seen in China and they will know that she is still not safe. 
they will know that people all across the world are still speaking out for Peng Shui. Activists say they'll keep asking the question until Peng can speak for herself. Ian Lee, CBS News. All right, let's moving on to some other news that everyone is talking about on the interweb. Well, this year's Oscars could look a little different. They've looked different for quite a few years now with mm-hmm. the pandemic. That's right. So this year, we're slated to have a host for the first time. Get this, since 2018. However, there are reports that the show might even have more than one host. Variety Magazine says the Academy of Motion Picture and Arts and Sciences is considering the possibility of having multiple hosts for the 94th Oscars. Oh. I can't believe we're on the 94th. Yeah. The show's producer have not really talked about this. Either has ABC, and which will air the show. You know, ratings have really been declining over the last years with the Oscars. The last time there was a host was Jimmy Kimmel back in 2018. I wonder who's up for consideration. Ashley and Jonathan. (laughs) That would be something. (laughs) We haven't seen enough movies. (laughs) Yeah. So the Antarctic has been called planet Earth's last true wilderness. So check out this scene. It's what one zoologist says may be one of the largest gatherings of fin whales ever documented. Now, cameras captured what was estimated to be more than a thousand whales gathered in a five mile wide area in the Southern Ocean. Now, the incredible moment was captured by scientist and photographer Connor Ryan, who said his mind was completely blown as he took in the sight aboard the polar expedition ship, the National Geographic Endurance. Now, the gathering of fin, blue, and humpback whales in the same region where whaling has nearly drove the species to extinction is an emotional sight for a lot of people. There's those whales I was looking yeah. for. Beautiful. Have you seen one this year? I have not, but I've not been looking either. I haven't really been to the beach that much. Mm-hmm. All right, good news now, everyone. Woohoo! <laughs> and we got some entertainment news for you. Let's get started with this. They're for Star Trek fans. If you're a Star Trek fan, you really want to listen up. Because... Picard is renewed for a second season. Star Trek Picard, that is. That's on Paramount+. Plus. Jean-Luc Picard and his crew go on a bold and exciting journey to the past to confront the problems of the 21st century and save the galaxy's future. And now that's an interesting plot line for any fl- fans of Next Generation. That's the one I used to watch because Whoopi Goldberg is coming back like she did in Generation, reprising her role as a bar hostess she played back from 1988 to 1993. Season 2 launches March 3rd. I've never seen Star Trek. Everything I know Not even from the movies? Star- no, oh, everything man. I know from Star Trek, I know from The Big Bang Theory. And Billy V. And he's, Billy V. <laughs> he's the biggest Star Trek fan there is. Right. More entertainment news. Yeah, so a sequel. This I have seen. This A sequel to the classic holiday movie, A Christmas Story, is in the works. So it's going to be called A Christmas Story Christmas. And it'll follow Ralphie Parker as a dad who returns mm-hmm. to his childhood home to celebrate Christmas with his children. Peter Billingsley will reprise his role as Ralphie. All I remember from that movie is, you'll shoot your eye out. You'll shoot your eye <laughs> out. Right. All right, guys. So good to be back with you today. Yesterday mm-hmm. was a little dramatic. That's why we didn't have a traditional show. There mm-hmm. was a gas leak. Here's some of the Instagram posts. You can see Ashley and myself out there in front of the building yesterday doing our best to bring you some live reports. There was a gas leak. All is clear now. Our building had to be evacuated, and we did all our evening shows. Four o'clock had to be postponed, but all our other evening shows, uh, the five and six, We're done out of a warehouse right down the street, and there's a look at that gas leak. You guys, that's going to do it for This Is Now on this Tuesday. Ashley's back at 4.